What's happening, guys? Keith here with your 2018 Impact Wrestling Year in Review. And I have a special guest. Ro, how are you? Good, Keith. Thanks for having me on, man. No problem. Pleasure's all mine. So, I guess first and foremost, news came out yesterday. Impact Wrestling will begin airing on Pursuit. I guess it's the Pursuit Channel. January 11th, right? That's the day? Yes. The post-homecoming show. So, initial thoughts, man? I mean, you know, a lot has been said this past 24 hours. You know, I look on Twitter, you know, you got some that hate it, you know, some that are optimistic, and then you got some that are in between. You know, my thing is, it's it's telling. It just shows you where the company is at. I mean, no matter how much a lot of us fans and even the casuals who are seeing the improvement in the product, it's not enough to warrant a bigger TV deal. I mean, those ratings, as much as we can you know, come up with, well, you know, people are DVR and or people are finding different uh, avenues to watching or cable uh, cutting, cutting yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Like it's, those ratings make a big deal. And that's what they're bringing to the negotiating table when they're trying to secure a deal with these bigger networks, let alone this is now their fourth station in the past, what, 10 years, I want I want to say. Yeah. Like, if you're a big network, like, what incentive do you have to bring in, bring them on board when you can look at that stuff? It looks like there's no stability. Right. But uh, with, with that said, I think the positive is it's good that they got this news out now. So, you know, the go-home show leading up to Homecoming, they can heavily promote this new channel. And then most importantly, I think, if anything, there's a big, big incentive for Homecoming to really knock it out of the park. Because if they can put on a good show, then... Everyone's gonna want to tune into that January 11th, you know, premiere edition right. on the new home. Well, well, that's one of the things I was thinking about as well. Will this hinder people from checking out Homecoming because, like, they're like, "Well, I can't watch the show going forward after Homecoming. Why? Why should I bother tuning in?" You know, I don't know if that's gonna play any factor into it as well. Yeah, I mean, it could. I mean, I think the biggest thing what you're gonna talk about now is. A lot of people are, they're going to have to catch it, you know, I, I guess I know some <laughs> avenues you can catch it on Saturday or, you know, whatever like that. But, I mean, I'll tell you the biggest thing that I said with with the whole change was like this. I felt like they either needed, they needed to switch days and get a better time slot. The time right. slot was probably the most imperative. To me, it's like you get on Fridays, but you couldn't get better than 10 p.m., that's the slot that you're just leaving from. So that just lets you know the bargaining power that they were working with. Right. Now, apparently, they Anthem has some sort of stake in the Pursuit channel. So like you said, you would think they would get a better spot. But I guess with, what do you have, New Japan on Friday, and then I think the new Women of Wrestling show on Axis is going to be on Friday. MLW's on Friday. Um, and then SmackDown moves to Friday in October. So it seems like a very packed night for wrestling. Yeah. And I mean, I guess, you know, word is out that this is just a stopgap. I mean, that remains to be seen. Um, I was just of the mindset when we even got news, I want to say, was it October or so about them not re-upping with pop? I, I mean, I like to believe, you know, they were searching for networks then, but obviously this was the best that they can get. And, I don't know if the mindset is they figure, you know, people will watch one show and then tune into the next. But, you know, there's so much wrestling now that that it comes on during the week compared to when you think about 20 years ago where it was a little Big bit two. more. Yeah, it was a little bit more spaced out where, like, I remember for me, I could watch Nitro on Monday, Thunder on Wednesday, uh, ECW on Friday and then uh, WCW on uh, Saturday as well. Whereas right. now, you know, WWE is, you know, I hate to say it, they've taken over pretty much the whole week of wrestling. Yeah, so you, get, <laughs> you get one of the big four pay-per-views. You have wrestling Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I mean, you know, it's it's just they've flooded the market. But um, as far as the new TV deal goes, I think a lot of negativity, at least from my standpoint, was... You know, when you showed me that they changed the pursuit, I looked it up. I didn't get the channel. And then all of a sudden I'm like, you know, I really enjoy this company. I can't watch now. 
how many other people can't watch as well? You know, I, I love doing the podcast. This might come to a halt if I can't watch it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, it and I think it, I'm just thinking selfishly because, like, somebody had said, I think it was Pro Wrestling Sheet had reported that this was actually a positive deal for Impact. And first, we're thinking about ourselves. We're actually not thinking about the company. You know? Yeah, yeah I mean, the financial aspect, that's what I was happy about. But I guess, and I'll say selfishly myself, the reason why I want them to succeed is because I feel, <clears throat> excuse me, if they're doing well, that'll give us more, whether it's more pay-per-views, another television show, more live events, because, you know, they're making a profit. When they're kind of just barely getting by, you know, we have to kind of work how they're working right now. And, you know, we both have talked, you know, <laughs> ad nauseum about them, you know, you know, dare I say, using Explosion as a second show because they have a talented roster, but there's only so much you can do on a, a show that you have once a week in a two hour slot. You can't right. get everybody on. You can't develop everyone. If they're doing well, they can get a second show that is uh, dedicated to, you know, developing the new talent for the future. Right. And the way they tape, you, you're taping, what, two episodes a night of taping? You're not going to have a guy wrestle three times. So you're going to have him one week, skip a week, then another week. And, you know, it's 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 just really tough. Yeah, but, you know, I'm sure we we and a lot of us, we all hope for the best. And like I said, I really think they got an opportunity, not only so much just to try to get some eyes on this new station, but... To start off, uh, 2019 with a bang. I mean, we look at 2018 overall. I think the biggest positive was the health of the company. Right. I mean, you think about past couple of years, we've you know had to hear from low morale to late payments and et cetera. So all that stuff has been erased. That's gone. Now, I just want to touch one more thing on the uh, impact moving to pursuit. Um, now there, this is a non-exclusive deal. That's what's reported. I'm wondering if they will be able to actually put the show onto YouTube or on the GWN, you know, a day after similar to what MLW does with YouTube. I mean, MLW, their numbers are very low. Uh, they usually get like 30 to 50,000 views when they upload it to YouTube and their YouTube page itself only gets between 10,000 and 20,000 views Per day impacts page right now on YouTube gets between 500,000 and 1 million views per day. You know, I mean, it's if they do upload the episode, I wonder how many views it would possibly do. Yeah, well, I'm sure they'll do very well because, you know, me too. I, I actually don't get the channel myself. So, you know, I'm going to be scrambling. Chances are I'm probably going to be watching on Saturdays like a lot of other people. You right. Know, Fridays, sometimes I'm home, sometimes I'm out. So, um, but, but I would hope, but then even too with the YouTube and I always remember it back to, uh, when they were on destination America and that's how I used to have to watch cause I didn't have the station at that mm-hmm. time where you get the show, but a lot of it is emphasized on probably the major angles. So there's just still stuff that's not included on YouTube. It's not like they're uploading. They were uploading the full show. You'd actually have to find somebody who's uploading that. And then you're talking about running the risk of copyright rights and et cetera. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, the the streams are available, but will they be available after this? You don't know. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) The way way words getting out, man, they might they might get burned, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll see. You know, like I said, we'll try to be positive. Um, I think a lot of us are selfishly thinking about ourselves and not the company, which I understand because we're fans of the product. We want to support the product. I just really hope that they don't push viewers away with the move people just go oh i don't get the channel i'm not gonna bother i'm done you know there there are still i'm sure casual viewers that just watch the show weekly and don't go online and go to the extent a lot of us fans do to talk about the product oh yeah i agree and i mean those type of fans like you know um and i try not to be critical of people's opinion but those aren't the ones that obviously impact we should want to keep because you know what like if you're loyal to the company you should follow where they go but with that said when they make it hard sometimes with some of their decisions and stuff i mean what can you do and i think you know i've seen online and not to you know call anyone in particular out but you know you see some of these people are critical and then you got some that say well you know stop complaining like 
a lot of that comes from just passionate fans. It's like you want to support this company, but, you know, they do some of the things and it makes it so hard and it's hard to absolve some of the things that they've done. There's no, only so many times you can blame, well, this station, if they were on this state, like sometimes it's not just the station. Right. I always say like this with pop, you know, there was so many people who were against pop when the ratings were good. That was under pop. You know, nobody was saying anything, but once it gets bad, oh, it's pop. It's because they're on pop. Like, right. how many times are you going to blame the channel? Like, mm-hmm. I, I, like I said, as much as we can praise how great it's been, some of the booking has been a little bit questionable. You know, we, you know, like to see it play out, obviously. But I mean, it, I just think you can't absolve Impact like they're just, you know, they do no wrong. Right. No. No. Absolutely. Um, I, I also think that uh, there was talk about the demographic and that was the reason they shifted over to a different network because pop was more geared toward women so they figure going to this network they may be able to reach more of their demographic but i mean pop was generally a soap opera drama television station and i mean wrestling is pretty much that for guys you know mm-hmm. yeah you're so, right so it did kind of fit the mold but again this was said that pop is rebranding and I guess impact wasn't a fit for them. But again, like you said, we've seen this before and uh, let's just hope our Lucha doesn't end up showing up on the station. Hey, hey, I'll say that. And also I'm going to tell you the one thing to be on the lookout for. And this is just, you know, we, I think we talked about it. Just my little theory. Now, the one thing that went under noticed, and I thought this would have helped impact maybe secure a deal with WGN was, I think it was the all in pre-show that was on WGN. Yep. that did right. Right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, and then it did really well. I I think I I don't know. I don't have the numbers. I think and it I thought, did about a hundred and something thousand thousand. Okay, but the, the the point that I was trying to make was I thought that might open the door for impact to you know as far as negotiations. If this all elite wrestling gains some steam and they can get on a big channel like that, like I and and, and I think that's just the biggest thing with when you're talking impact. Like nobody thinks they're gonna die, but see before they were the alternative. You know, if you were unhappy with the E, they were the alternative. And there's, that's no disrespect to Ring of Honor, New Japan, or Unset Promotion, but people were choosing between joining Impact or joining WWE, whereas now there's so many different options. So if yep. Impact isn't yep. cutting it for people, oh, I'll start watching this. And if that All Elite Wrestling really gets off and they get on a big channel, and then you're talking about Era Lucha as well, I mean, you know, and depending the day that they fall on to, that's a tough thing. That'll be tough on impact, but we just yeah, got to wait and see. Yeah. That is very true. All right. True. So let's talk about 2018. Um, the year of rebuilding, so to speak. We got more pay per views. Um, we've had less departures. What was your favorite moment of 2018, Ro? I'd have to say that Fallaba versus Austin Aries match only because they took a guy who, but you know, safe to say up until then, just comic relief. He was losing every other match. And for one night they made him a credible challenger. And that kind of just validated what I always thought with impact. Like they don't need stars from the outside. They can make their own stars if they can, you know, fully get behind them. So I would say that was my favorite moment of 2018. Yeah, I mean that was that was really good. You know, it was a story that was told throughout the show. You know, we don't get that too often now. It's generally we're just kind of they're already telegraphing what's going to happen on the show by giving a lot of it away through their social media, and this time we didn't get that. So it made for different TV. Um, I mean, I, I think my highlight of the year was definitely Slammiversary. I really enjoyed the show. I mean, personally, I went to Bound for Glory, and just the, just the atmosphere and everything was. It was just so much fun. Best wrestling experience I've ever had. Yeah, you know, and it's crazy. You know, we always talk about this. I think you know, it's a common thing. You always see leading up to Slam Anniversary, and then even Slam Anniversary in itself, where you know it always does well. It has the past few years, and then it just seems like that builds for Bound for Glory is when they kind of, uh, I want to say, struggle a little bit. And I think maybe, you know, one idea is start back up the Bound for Glory series. You know, that way it's just kind of building towards something instead of just giving us a main event, something like that. Because these past couple of years of Build for Bound for Glory just seems so, you know, just blah, at least in my eyes. 
Well, in 2017, definitely wasn't a great bound for glory. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, but that was when, you know, there was a possibility that the company was closing down. I mean, there was that interview with Ed Nordholm, and he said that, you know, there was a point where we didn't know what to do. Yeah, and that's the positive, man. I mean, we didn't get any of that this year. Like, I think that's probably the biggest win, if anything else. You know, I know a lot of people say, well, now, you know, they're getting, excuse me, you know, they were able to get some more eyes on the product. But just the health of the company, that is such a big win. And I oh, think yeah. that sets them up better for 2019. Absolutely. And just the backstage, there was no drama. People said it was a great environment. Again, we didn't have many people leaving the company post what was it? When did Lashley leave? He was probably one of the last guys to leave, right? Or was EC3 after him? Yeah, because they left. I want to say they left earlier this year, but we see this a lot. I think to um, with so so many changes in management, you know, different regimes have are higher on certain wrestlers. So you kind of see where like under this regime, this wrestler is probably getting you know this biggest push and the emphasis on them. Then when the next regime comes in, they kind of have to <laughs> rebuild themselves in a sense. Right. No, absolutely. Because like you said, you know, once you have manager turnover at your job, the management's going to treat you differently than the previous one and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, so I watched a little of the uh, best of 2018 part one and I didn't watch the recording of Bound for Glory since I was there, obviously. And just the... The, you can just tell the difference between the pay-per-view excitement and the regular TV show. And again, I remember you had said something about them possibly or thinking that maybe they should hold the uh, pay-per-views in a different arena just because it makes them feel special or do something with different with the sets. Well, I mean, just to think realistically, obviously I know finances are everything, and I think that's why, you know, them – you know, this new deal, TV deal being better financially, that's something maybe they could put towards. I mean, if if you're going to use the same arena, I think my idea was just more so to change it up a little bit where you can feel it feels different from pay-per-view versus TV. Because right. I think that's what kind of happens, too. And we've seen, um, I think, was it, I don't know if it was in New York. Well, yeah, because in New York had the Bound for Glory, where we've seen sometimes it looked like not as many people have showed up. And, you know, it's a, that's a lot of wrestling you're talking about. You go see a pay-per-view Sunday, then they have tapings Monday, and then tapings Tuesday. That That's a lot. People work. <laughs> well, that, and you're going up against the biggest competitor when they run their, you know, shows. Yeah. So I'm sure that definitely plays a part. Yeah, true. Definitely. Um, oh, we did lose Andrew Everett. What did he leave? Midsummer. Yeah. Yeah, but that was just... That wasn't, I don't think, anything against the company. It was just... He felt he could be utilized better elsewhere. Yeah, and, and you know, that's the thing for a lot of people, you know, on there. And I think that's why I just find myself when they're always, you know, when people are always saying, oh, who should they sign? I really think if I could say one goal for 2019, I just really want to see them develop their own stars. I think they're more than capable. They've shown that they're able to do that. Don't rely so much on going on the outside. But with that said, only, <clears throat> excuse me, at this time having impact like they need to probably better utilize explosion and the Twitch shows to develop new talent. So then when you, you know, put them on impact, you know, they could take off take off from there. That way we're not really losing so many guys because the one the one thing I don't like, I just feel like the people that they invest in sometimes, whether it's your El Patrons or your Austin Aries, they usually get burned in the end. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I mean, it seems also that just take, you know, Pentagon, for example. He's working for Impact, MLW, Lucha Underground. There's so many places he's working for, and it's not like you have exclusive talent that you can only see here. Yeah. Do you think that deal, you know, how they, they uh, the one thing that they had talked about is, you know, like you said, not being exclusive, they're free to work anywhere. Do you think that hurts them in a sense? Because it's kind of like if they're, <clears throat> excuse me, unhappy, you know, they can just go work, you know, leaves to, you know, the other promotions or, you know, heavily work in the other promotions. Do you think that hurts them in the long term? I mean, maybe very little. I don't think it's a huge thing. I think it's more of people wanting to work there because of the freedom. 
I, you know, I, mm-hmm. and I think that was their mindset with it. But again, that doesn't, you know, create many unique things when you have, well, I'm just say Rich Swan and Willie Mack. I think they're both in MLW, you know, mm-hmm. I mean, you could have similar feuds in each, each company. That's, and it's like, why would I choose impact over this show? If I can see the talent there and, you know, yeah, exactly, exactly. And see, that's just my thing. That's why I said <clears throat> what I'm saying is, you know, now, like, say, and I always use WCW as one of my favorite companies, but, you know, yeah, but I used to have favorite guys that were favorite uh, wrestlers that used to work for that company, then I'd go and watch. But, I mean, if they, you know, worked in ECW or in all these other ones, then, I mean, there's really no incentive for me to catch them on WCW because it'd be like, hey, you know, I can catch them when they wrestle here. So I just kind of wonder sometimes, I mean, as great of an idea that is because <clears throat> I don't think anyone else is doing something like that, I do feel like it can kind of bite them because once again, you know, when we talk about these this viewership, a lot of times people tune in to Impact because they got certain wrestlers who Impact signed on that they're, you know, they want to follow. But right. I mean, if they're not exclusively to Impact and they're wrestling here and there, then I mean, huh, okay, if I didn't see them on Impact, I'll see them at MLW, and then exactly. you just lost a you just lost a viewer. Mm-hmm. Which is why, again, like you said, homegrown talent. I mean, let's let's take a look at KM and Falaba. Two guys that were you thought probably going to do nothing in the company, and now are two of the biggest baby faces in the company. Yeah, I I, I just feel the one thing that <clears throat> they can afford. Impact has the impact can afford to take chances that I think others can't, because I think if something fails, and I hate to call it so much of a failure, but you know we saw with Pentagon's world title reign, it didn't go over as well as they had wanted. They ended up deciding to put the belt back on Austin. No harm, no foul. I think they need to take more chances with certain individuals and just see, like, I think giving Fala and Cam a tag title and just see how it goes, you know? And if it doesn't go as you as you expect, take it off of them and just, you know, okay, right. we know we know better next time. The, the one thing about this fan base that I love is they're willing to let Impact, you know, if they make a silly decision, you know, they're not holding it against them. It's like, okay, you know, that didn't work, you know, carry on. But I feel like they need to take more chances and strike when the iron's hot. Oh, absolutely. And I think that was the big thing going into Slammiversary and why it was such a hit. Everything felt so different. You know, we had that great match between Sammy Callahan and Pentagon. Um, the world title match was very good. There was just so many good things about it because they were all fresh and new. And it seemed like the company was taking a lot of chances with things going into Slammiversary. Yeah, I think, and I think that's what people love. I mean, I, I know you do. I know I do. I mean, listeners can chime in, obviously. But I think folks love chances. And, you know, I've, I've always said, even at these tapings sometimes, where they should do And I'm not saying play hot potato with these titles, but... You know, it's okay to give away a title change on a taping. I think, you know, and we it's we all know, you know, people look at spoilers sometimes, but sometimes spoilers help. I mean, if it leaks out like, hey, man, this episode of Impact, man, you know, some crazy stuff happens. You know, people are inclined to want to tune in and see that specific episode. So well, it's, it's staying just things like that. Yeah, that's what happened with the uh, Eddie Edwards, Sammy Callahan incident. It got so much press that people tuned in for it. <laughs> and they fell into that. It's crazy. Like their best, the best stuff they have, it's stuff that they fell into because they could have easily kind of downplayed it, and then that have been the end of it. But they turned it into an angle and a hey, we got some amazing matches out of it. You know, Sammy Callahan, and th- that's another one too. I think like for all the work he's done, I mean, I, I really thought they should have put the exhibition title on him and just let him run with it. But there's that was another missed opportunity. Right, right. And then you bring in the. Uh... There being no real mid card title. I mean, I know Callis got rid of the grand championship and said he didn't want more titles, but there's that point where people, you know, you need to graduate from one to the other. Yeah, yeah. and in and, and I think it's just a situation is it just kind of feels at times. <clears throat> and that's why we don't have a defined main event. You know, you you can call out a few names, but a lot of these divisions, you know, it's just a lot of people just having matches just to have matches. Now, we all know not everyone's going to be champions. You know, this isn't no participation award or anything of that magnitude. But, you know, you like to feel somebody's fighting towards something. The old thing is, you know, every wrestler wants to one day be champion. Doesn't mean that they will, but that's the goal. 
So I just kind of think, and I get it, you know, some people are on the side of they don't need any more titles, it's fine. But like like I've always said with the X Division, they need to clarify what exactly is the X Division because we hear two different things. It just seems now if you're a high flyer, that qualifies you as X Division. And I don't believe that's what the X Division was, uh, you know, when it first was created, that was the thing. I know they say it's about no limits. We get it. But, I mean, you see there's not much diversity in the division. You know, every now and then they'll throw, like, even in this Ultimate X match, they'll throw in, you know, some non-X division guy. But, I mean, I guess since he does a Swanton Bomb, that qualifies as X division. But, you know, it's safe to say most of the competitors are usually cruiserweight guys. So, right. it just some clarification on the division, I think, can really help if this is going to be the mid-card title. Well, I, I think, again, that's something that Impact needs to uh, work on as well is their identity. It seems like, you know, we shipped from one thing to the other. We were all of a sudden going to be edgy and pushing some things, and then they kind of pulled back a little. And I, I think that's that's part of the problem as well. But also, um, oh, what were you going to say? No, 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 I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I, I I completely agree with the X Division. Um, so the highest rated episode for 2018, I believe, was the title versus title match with Austin Aries putting up the world title against uh, Matt Seidel's Grand Championship when the two titles were merged. So what what what'd you think about that? You know, that was a good match, man. I mean, I liked it because, you know, you're talking about two guys who essentially, if they were in another company, would probably be... <laughs> on the 205 live but impact gate you know didn't look at these guys and pigeonhole them as light heavyweights and put them in a main event and once again like i said stuff like this you know taking a chance with this and look at how well received it was um i i hate that they ended up merging the grand title obviously you know i know we just talked about them needing the mid card title i really think the grand title would give a lot of people something to do and something to strive for but uh, that's great, and I really think Seidel is somebody that when they're looking at trying to add some people to the main event, why not move him up? I really think he's shown enough in the ring that he can work a main event style. Well, that, and also it seems like they have they really held him to high regard, especially this year. I mean, we saw him pair with Josh Matthews very briefly. They realized that didn't work. Then all of a sudden he was, you know, cutting all these promos and things like that. It seemed like he was getting out of his comfort zone where they were going to elevate him as a, you know, I guess a higher character, so to speak. Yeah, you know, and I, I don't know. I think he most recently signed the deal, but I think and Don talked about this and he didn't give any specifics, but I felt like Seidel was looked at one of his the top guys as far as like, you know, in the future so you know hopefully <clears throat> excuse me hopefully they they can do something with that but i really think he'd be a nice addition in the main event scene because you know we're looking at johnny impact now you know eventually he's going to start running out of people to face and i'd love to see a match headlined impact pay-per-view etc where you're having johnny impact put a put, defend the impact world championship against a matt side right right no that definitely makes sense and uh again like when uh Eli Drake was champion back in 2017. He had those matches with Petey Williams. And I think he also faced Seidel, right? Didn't Seidel beat Lashley for an opportunity at the world title? Yeah, he did. And, you know, those were good as well, especially that Petey Williams one. I, I thought in one night, somebody who was just seemed like an ex divisioner for life, they really made him a credible challenger. And, and that, I, that was when uh, Eli was what? He was the first person to kick out of the Canadian Destroyer. Yeah, yeah, he was. And then this year we get Tommy Dreamer kicking out of the gravy train. <laughs> not, not the person that, <laughs> you should, that that should have received that nod. Hey, credit to Tommy Dreamer, though. He actually went out of his way to tweet and try to get you know promote the the channel change. So, you know, kudos to Tommy Dreamer. That's good. No, absolutely. Yeah, he's he's definitely been an asset for the company. So... Um, we had 2018, the debut of the Twitch shows. Um, what do we get? Generally one a month, right? I b believe so. Yeah. Uh, have you tuned into any of those? or? Man, the last one I caught was the uh, Impact versus Lucha Underground. <laughs> so yeah. that tells you how blind I am. I gotcha. 
Um, I mean, outside, you know, they've had a few issues here and there, mostly technical issues, but the shows they've been putting on were were pretty good, and uh, it's just hopefully moving forward they're able to incorporate them more story-based. Yeah, that's the biggest thing. I think, you know, for me, it's just I get a lot of times when they come on, um, you know, maybe when I get home they're already kind of into it, and then, you know, if I have free time, maybe I can go and catch some. But I think that's just the biggest thing, whether it's that or the one night onlys. Like, no one's saying the whole show needs to ba- be based on it. But for somebody that you haven't been able to get TV TV time to or some angle that you're trying to run, like, go ahead and run it on there. But I do think what the difficulty with that is because they take, you know, so much in advance where, you know, it's hard to kind of forego like, OK, hey, look, we're going to we're taping in January, but we're running this event in February okay we need to you know extend this so it can tie into right to to the twitch show so i i can get it but yeah that would that'd be nice i i I think that would get more eyes to tune in and watch it yeah um i mean i I think they have you know shown that they're planning on doing stuff like earlier in the month or the end of last month we did see brian cage versus moose at one of the shows and then we did see it on tv so it's almost like they're kind of testing the waters with things as well now see that that's a that's a great idea. You see you kind of see the fan reaction to it, and then that really gives you ideas for as far as feuds and et cetera. And even too, if they want to see like if they have their mindset on they want to make this person champion, you know, you see you know give them put them in that slot on these Twitch shows or these one night onlys, see how they receive, and obviously a good reception, you know, then you know what you'll get, you know, if you do it on actual television. Right. Right. And I I think we've talked about this and using explosion more to develop talent. So that's one thing I hope they do in 2019. But they just there's so much that they have that they can they have to work with. You know, you have the GWN, you have all the Twitch shows. Their YouTube is just had tremendous growth this year. And I I just think they're having trouble with all the platforms getting everything, you know, on the same page because they have so much to work with. Yeah, and that's another thing, too. I think now with these changes, I think there needs to be, if if there was ever a time, more of an emphasis on improving the GWN. And when I'm saying improving, like, it's nice that they have the old library and, you know, obviously that's where I watch Explosion. I know you watch Explosion there and others watch Explosion on there. But there's more of an incentive to, you know, I like the first thing I would say, and I obviously understand they got the thing with fight, but to air pay-per-views on them, that'd be nice. But not only that, if you're dealing with a lot of people who aren't going to be able to catch impact on pursuit, have it on the GWN. Right. Even if it's, you know, uploaded the next morning or something like that. But that's, you know, something we're going to have to wait and see. We, all of us, you know. It's just such a change that we weren't ready for, I guess. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to, you know, see what they do. And that's ultimately all we can do. Exactly. Um, But uh, yeah, their their YouTube growth was just phenomenal this year. I mean, they had over a million subscribers uh, or they just had a million subscribers in, I think it was October of 2017. And then a year later, they were at two million subscribers and like I said, they do 500,000 to a million views a day. Yeah, you know, the funny thing, uh, BQ, <clears throat> the, the mastermind of the Impact Lounge, um, he had always said, though, the thing with the YouTube, they give so much on YouTube at times that <laughs> you can really watch sometimes the whole show on it. Well, not the whole show, but you can get a kind of a gist of what the show was based on just solely on YouTube. Right, and I think that was something that they brought up, too, with the uh, ratings when they started to dip because it almost seemed like Impact was looking at YouTube as being the possible cause for it, and everybody wrote that off. But, I I mean, I definitely think there is some truth to that. Yeah, you know, it it, it's – and I think that's the thing. Maybe it's just to have – you know, because they understand TV is important, but I could see, you know, a situation where there will be an emphasis on – you know, more so going digital. But I think if that's going to be the case, then your TV show you're talking about, looking at it where you're not going to really want to run any major, major storylines 
since all the eyes are going to be on the digital content. But, you know, we just got to see how it plan, plan, uh, plays out. I mean, like I said, I know with this change, you know, everybody's opinion's different. You know, there's a lot of people that can't understand why people are upset. You know, they're on TV. And then you got some, you know, like us, we're saying it's not so much you're on TV, but this is the fourth station. Like every two, three years, they're switching stations. That doesn't bode well, you know, right. where anywhere you try to spin it. But yeah, it is a positive. So, and you know, obviously, the more content, the better. Like, I, I really like the idea, and I know we, I don't think we touched on it, but they did talk about potentially them getting a second show. I mean, if that, if this deal can help aid that, I'm all on board for that because Lord knows they need a second show. Right. No, absolutely. Um, but again, I think this was just Impact saying, you know. TV is still crucial in this time. We need to have some presence on TV. And then, like you said, maybe this will we will see the increase in the digital market. Yeah, definitely. Like, we could only hope. There's no no way but up from here. Right. I'm, exactly. Um, so Callahan, wrestler of the year. You think that was uh, that was fair? Um, I, I, I guess so. Because you know what you're looking at. I, I think. Okay, the Eddie Angle, when did, when did that happen around? Oh, uh, that was pre-redemption, right? Because they had the six-man tag then. Okay, okay. You know what? I, I think that he's he's earned that nod because he came in, you know, originally, you know, we he was just a part of OVE. Then he really became OVE, or they would even say OVE <laughs> is Callahan and the Chris Brothers. But yeah, he he has. I mean, everything he's been given, and I mean, he's lost a lot of matches, but it has it hasn't hurt his stock at all. Um, he really came in, and he, uh, you could say, he got some eyes on the product for sure. Oh well, absolutely. After the baseball <laughs> incident, um, but no, he's uh, you know he had some good matches with him. Like I said, with Pentagon, that lasted a while, and then him with Cage again. Like you said, they. They could have just pulled the title off of Cage, put it on Callahan. He had the Chris brothers at his side. You could have made it so it was a screwy finish. Yeah, they, you know, and I know we talked about this dream scenario, and I know people hate it, but I really just thought an angle they could have ran and you could have saved it for Brian Cage's first loss was have a, you know, handicap match and have OVE beat brian cage and have ove the group recognized as the x division champion i just really thought you could get so much out of that so um but obviously they didn't go that go that route i mean you know it doesn't hurt callahan but i just think he's so hot at the point like you know your hottest you know one of your hottest stars you want to be able to reward them with some form of a championship if you can right and i've heard he's been doing things behind the scenes as well for the company like he said, he wants to be the one to change Impact Wrestling. I think he was on uh, uh, Bully Ray's show, and he talked about that. Yeah, I mean, you know what? So far, he's doing so far so good. So, I mean, yeah, I think him being the MVP, Impact MVP, I mean, I can disagree. Yeah, I, I think it was it was the, the right call. So who do you think was the most improved wrestler of 2018? Most improved, huh? Yeah, it doesn't have to be in ring, just character based, something like that. I'll go with Ali, and I'll just say this just because you know, you think about how long it took her to f finally get from the apprentice to not learning how to wrestle to being the confident Ali, and then we see you know where, where she's at now, where it's dark Ali. So, I think her character progression is while it's slow at times. I, I want to say it's it's an and when I'm saying improvement, excuse me, not that it was uh, terrible before, but yeah, I, I really just say improved character wise. Yeah, I know. I think that's definitely a fair thing, and I, I kind of like the slow burn with the uh, the you know the turn from her to the dark side. I think that worked really well. Um, as far as mine most improved, I'm honestly going to say Moose. I didn't think he was going to win the title at Slammiversary just because I didn't think he was ready. He got the heel turn, and he's just owned the character. He's lived it, regardless of where he is, social media, impact, you know, the house shows, things like that. <laughs> you know, and in his uh, dress choice, too, I mean, some of that stuff he'd be coming out, coming out wearing, man, it's uh, pretty bold. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Well, he's he's someone that is exclusive to Impact, right? You yeah. don't really see him. I mean, House of Hardcore, I think we've seen him, but not. He used to be in Ring of Honor. I don't think he's in MLW. And I guess Eli can be said the same as well. Yeah, you know, he and I and I guess where I disagree is, you know, and I know a lot of people say they weren't ready, but I really thought that they should have taken a chance at Slam Reversary just to see what would happen. If it failed, you could take the belt right off of Moose. I just kind of just think sometimes, and I don't want to come across as like, well, oh, everybody needs to win, but I think what you have to be able to do is establish some credible challengers. You know, some that are former champions where they look like they're a threat. Like, I think that's one of the great things with Eddie Edwards when you slot him into a main event title match. He's always a threat because he's a former champion. Right. So, but um, with that said, I think Hill moves, he's really taken the ball and ran with it. So I do think now, once he gets that opportunity again, I think management has seen enough with him where they can buy him in, it, buy him as world championship material. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, you know, obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, and they, you know, we didn't expect everything to happen with Aries. I mean, I'm sure it was in the back of our minds that there was always that possibility. But, yeah. you know, and uh, probably the biggest blessing in disguise of 2018 was uh, saying goodbye to Alberto. Uh <laughs> you know, they, they had a, you know, I think that's one of those instances. They had such a love with Alberto where, you know, they got saved from themselves because, you know, Alberto, you know, I'll do. I'm not trying to clown anyone if they have any personal demons, but, you know, he he just can't uh, stay out of trouble, it seems. So, you know, good on them. And th that's another thing, too, if I could uh, applaud Impact for not taking any shit anymore. Like, yeah. I think in the in the past that used to be kind of like their Achilles heel. Like El, El Patron no showed, you're done. You know, you have uh, Austin Aries, and I know some people are you know still think it's a work angle, whatever like that. They did away with it, and we don't hear anything else about it. Good, good on them. Like no, you don't absolutely. need that. You don't need that type of uh, behavior because talent sees that. You know, and when you're let, allowing stuff like that happen, like that brings bad morale as well. So you know, good on them. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, that They made the right decision. They were able to make that main event probably five times better than what it was going to be. And you brought in new talent. Yeah, accomplished a whole lot. <laughs> right, because had they gone through with the match, who knows if we would have even seen Pentagon in uh, Phoenix. Yeah, you know, I, I think the only thing with that, and they were put in a position just given what happened was unfortunately and and i think had they had the time to really introduce pentagon to people i think his title reign probably would have been better received not that people were so negative but i think it just kind of came across at least the casual as, oh god impact put their title on somebody who's not with the company mm -hmm. and and i think that kind of just uh, doomed it a little bit right no no absolutely i mean i i wouldn't say they gave, were able to give it a fair shot because they were still taping i think two months worth of tv post redemption so it, it was it, it's one of those tough calls yeah definitely definitely um another positive we got out of the impact zone we went to canada two different locations mexico new york vegas and it looks like it's the same way for next year you know i i've never been there obviously so it's hard for me to you know, really kind of critique the um, impact zone in Orlando. I know a lot of people are critical. Um, you know, they talk about the crowd not being engaged. And look, it's hard for me to be overly critical because I'm not there. You don't know why they're not engaged. Maybe they didn't feel the product was up to par. Maybe it's burnout. It's a whole plethora of things. Um, I do think what the one thing that they've shown, and I think that's one thing they got to, you know, they should look into as they approach 2019, look at these spots that you're going to and just kind of see the turn fan turnout. I think they know when when in doubt Canada, they, they know they got the following in Canada. And, you know, you're seeing some in New York and Vegas, like, you know, take that into effect. And those are the places where, you know, maybe when you're talking about pay-per-views and et cetera that you take into mind. I do would like to see them just, I don't know, maybe just as kind of like a, 
I, I'm not, I won't even say a farewell, but just go by the impact zone once sometime in 2019 just to see if maybe the turnout's better because maybe the fans, you know, miss it that much that they'll, you know, be going out and really kind of be into the product or, you know, maybe it's just a no-go. But I do think them going to different venues has helped, you know, at least from a backstage perspective where talent, you know, they're enthusiastic because, you, you know, you're not wrestling in the same spot, you know, the whole year. Right. No, absolutely. And it was a risk they took, you know, it was unknown what the turnout would be like because they've been in Orlando for so long. I mean, on the flip side, there were a few negatives for them leaving the country for tapings. We lost talent along the way that weren't like Taya. She. We saw her in. Uh, po- I mean, pre Bound for Glory 2017, and then she wasn't back till they came back to Orlando. And then same thing with Joe Hendry and Grado. We saw them in Mexico. We didn't see them in New York and Vegas. So, I mean, there's little things here and there. But I would say definitely the positives outweighed the negatives. Yeah, I think that's that's probably the biggest downside when you're talking about them going to Canada or different venues. It seems like there's always an issue, whether it's Visa or whatnot. And sometimes... In, like you mentioned with Ty, I think the biggest thing and we what comes to mind was a whole about a year ago with the red wedding. Like sometimes it can be tough when you have a big angle going on and then this talent can't appear due to something like that. So um I think that's the the tough part. But I mean, it seems where they go, especially in Canada, I, I keep plotting Canada because I, I just really thought the Canada atmosphere and the crowd were were amazing. One of the high higher points of a well, 2008 had a lot of high points, but one of the highest points. Um, there's enough talent that they have that, you know, it doesn't bring the show down whatsoever. No, no, definitely not. And I think the uh, the June tapings from this year when they went to St. Clair's College, which I think they're going back in March of next year, that's where we saw the uh, lead up to Slammiversary. And I think that was probably the best crowd that we had all year. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, this 2008 has been a great year. I mean, it looks like it's and, and when I'm saying the, the positive buzz they've got, I think as far as just because the backstage stuff in <clears throat> some people forget how terrible that stuff was. So, you know, maybe impacts in a situation where there there is like two parts. Let's get the backstage, you know, things in order. Now we can focus solely on the television product. And if right. that's the case, and then that that makes sense. But I think that's one of those things that I mean, man. I just remember like every, and it seemed like every um, leading up to Bound for Glory. Oh well, is the company gonna fold? Is the pay per view gonna go on? We didn't get any of that this year, and that was refreshing. No, and they already have taping set up through uh, March, so we already have you know some things concrete for next year, which again helps. Um, but, uh, one of the other things that like you had spoke about, we, us not getting the, uh, red wedding match between Taya and Rosemary at, uh, bound for glory, 2017, I thought their demons dance match was very good. Um, that pile driver through the table to end it was, uh, was fantastic. Oh yeah. They, you know, and I know it's funny, Adam, <laughs> my co-host on, uh, the Adam and Rose show. Um, he always talks about how <laughs> they just put a fancy name on a lot of these essential hardcore matches, but yeah, that, that was good. And, um, I, I, I think that would, how, how was that one of the higher rated shows in 2018? That I am not sure. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm, if I'm over here, you know, guessing, but yeah, that, that would, you know, they kind of just went outside the box, man. And I mean, we, none of us knew what, a demon dance was i mean up no. <laughs> until we've seen it but you know that was really neat and once again like i said like things like that is what makes me believe that they don't impact doesn't have to resort to you know getting the net you know hottest free agent i mean obviously that's cool you know but they have the talent enough where if they just you know get behind it it's going to deliver the results that they desire well and you know i think the Worst part of 2018 for Impact was Rosemary going down with that injury, which kept her out from, I think, April through now. Yes, and that and that 
Oh, go ahead, finish, and I'll. I'll add a no, I, I just think that people really, some people anyway, didn't understand how much she actually meant to the company and the fans. There was just so much engagement from the fans on social media, through YouTube, through everywhere, that I think that that hurt a, a little bit as well. And see, you know what? The one I'll say the one downside that you're talking about would. You know, talking about it when the talent not being exclusive, where they can work other promotions, while it's good, and I think this happened to Rich Swan. I want to say up to Slammiversary, he had worked a show, and I think he uh, got a concussion. Yep. And he, they had to write him out. I think that's what the toughest thing about it is. They don't want to deny the talent that you know they want to give them that freedom, but then too, it's kind of like, especially if you're in embarked in some angle that's about to pay off at a pay-per-view that's a risk you run and unfortunately rosemary got hurt on a show outside of impact and you know you could argue it probably messed with a lot of the storylines i mean obviously you know we got the elevation of sue young which is a positive but you know my thing was always if they're waiting to do sue young versus rosemary i mean how long can you you know Hold off on that. Yeah, hold off on do it while fan fan interest is still there because we were talking about that type of injury. I mean that that can take anywhere from eight months to a year, and you know even so, you know with certain lower extremity injuries like that, you know being a wrestler, I would imagine it's going to take its toll on you. It's going to slow you down just a tad. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Um, but again, you know we saw the Dark Alley character, which who knows. If that was even in the works at the time, yeah, and I mean, and so someone with like Sue Young, when I think it's one mild low point, you know, it's a shame, you know, she had all this momentum going in, and then she just kind of just got lost in the shuffle relatively quick. I mean, they, you know, been doing their part now that they have her part, you know, with the whole dark alley thing, but you know, she was somebody, man, that you know, I felt like. And, and maybe I'm, I'm where I'm going with it is when they took the knockouts title off of her. I thought maybe it was too soon, but I get why they did it because in Tessa, and that's I don't know if you're going to get to that, but uh, the knockouts of the year, obviously by far, can't argue uh, Tessa. No, um, <laughs> you know she's the perfect champion, and, and as well as I'll say this: when they're talking about big names to carry this company in the foreseeable future, she's one. She's at least in the top five. I mean, hell, let alone three. She's a she's a name that you know. I feel like she can carry carry this company to the greater heights that we all want. No, absolutely, and I'll agree with you. I think when they did take the title off of Sue, it really did hurt her and set her back a little bit because we really haven't seen that push again for her. But um, we we all knew it was going to happen with Tessa, and rightfully so. But again, that triple threat match it, it was a little underwhelming, to be honest. Yeah, they, you know, and that was my thing. I just kind of thought for Tessa's first title win, I, you know, I, I thought I had anticipated to be, you know, better than that. But, you know, the thing I didn't understand is I thought they could have really done something with Tessa and Sue. I thought there was enough there that they could have ran something with that. And that's the one thing we see in Impact sometimes. Some of these people lose their titles and then it's just like, oh, well, let me move on. Like, you know, we don't get no rematch clauses or or anything and then look nobody's saying they go by the standard wrestling rules but that gives you know you're, you're able to get mileage out of whatever feud that you have going on when you do things of that caliber right but then sometimes they end up going too long with feuds like i mean lax and ogs i feel like they went a little too long with the feud and that held the tag team titles up and i'm pretty sure you feel similar about that yeah, because I think LAX is at a point, or they've been at a point where they don't need the titles. Like, they're already over. I think, you know, you always kind of know in your back bag when in doubt, they're kind of the well that you can go to when, you know, you want your tag, you know, the hottest team. You know, I guess it makes sense to have the hottest team be champion. But I really think it's time to kind of give someone else a shot. That's going to help develop the tag team division a little bit because, we see this with LAX. The biggest problem with them, not the team, but just, I guess, the way that they're booked, they run through so many tag teams so quick where they don't have nobody else to work with. So, you know, we're, we're going into a homecoming. I mean, and I'm sure, you know, you have a prediction show, but just say if they walk out of their champions, who do they face next? They've run through everybody. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. And again, I remember you had said this uh, a while back that, 
the feud between LAX and the Lucha Brothers really didn't need the titles. You have plenty of background story with just Conan bridging the gap between the two teams. Yeah, you just yeah, I I just just so I'm thinking. I mean, I I get it because Lucha Brothers are hot acts too, and you know having both your hot acts compete for the tag titles, you know that's wonderful. But then too, they could have had just a simple grudge match without the titles. I right. just kind of think right now, you know, we, we talk about KM and Fala. Um, I wouldn't say so much OVE. OVE's fine without them. But even too, and I mean, <laughs> this might be an unpopular one, but even a team like the Desi Hit Squad that obviously, you know. It, even though it seems there's a lot of stop and go with them, they see something in them for them to be getting the time that they get on TV. Like, I think those teams can benefit, if not being champion, chasing for the titles. Like, I think that could help them get over, whereas LAX and Lucha Bros, they're already over, so they're not needed. Right. No, absolutely. And I wonder if a piece of it is if they don't keep LAX in the main you know, tag title scene or something like that, that maybe they will go elsewhere, you know? I mean, they are the pretty much the hottest acts that Impact has as far as the tag teams go. They are their division. Yeah, but there and there's another thing I'd say for 20, 2019. What they have to be able to do is have people kind of waiting in the wings in a sense because you can't, there can't be this fear, and I'm not saying Impact has this fear, but they can't have, there can't be this fear like, well, if we don't, push them to the top all the time we're gonna lose them it's kind of the reason where like when ec3 departed where i kind of soured on him because i felt like you know this guy man they gave him the ball and he benefited the most mm-hmm. i would say from the old regime so when it came time to kind of showcase somebody else and instead of trying to help them get over he kind of just phoned it in and look we don't know what happened behind the scenes it could have been more to it but i'm just saying as a fan watching that kind of just pissed me off because it's like oh okay so if you're not at the top, you're going to be upset. And you can even argue with the Austin Aries as well. And you don't, we don't need those type of talents. We need talents that once they've climbed to the top, they're able to extend their hand and pull somebody up there with them. That way we have, instead of just having one or two people, we have a collection of stars. So then if someone does depart, hey, there's someone that can fill that role. There's not that big drop off. And speaking of somebody who was on top going into 2018, Eli Drake, I, I'm pretty sure you're on the same page with me as far as the title change with Aries and Drake. I just felt like they could have gone better or a better route with that, and I feel like Eli just still hasn't, you know, come back to his potential. You know, it's it's mind-boggling with him what they're doing with him. I like to believe that the route they're they're going to go is he's going to eventually enter a major feud with Johnny Impact. I mean, that's my heart speaking because I'm a big Eli Drake fan. But I, I thought what they did when they had Austin Aries come in and take the belt off of him, they kind of resorted back to old, I'd say the old TNA. where And I, and I get, I think the mindset was because Austin Aries was in TNA and former TNA world champion that it'd be received. But, you know, you finally pull the trigger on Eli Drake and having him be the world champion. And even so, you know, sometimes he wasn't even the focal point because even when they had the whole El Patron thing. But you have Austin Aries who was competing. I think he was in the the 205 thing. He yeah. comes right in and wins the world title. Like, what does that say to the talent? Right, and, right. And, and, you know, then on top of that, you know, they didn't even have really no extended feud. I know they had the rematch, but then that was that. And it's, you know, things like that where some of the stuff, you know, how, and when I'm saying they treat, but some of the way how they book the talent where someone off the street gets kind of pushed ahead in front of the line, in front of the people that have been there, when they depart, you can't blame them from departing. I mean, how would you feel? You've been working at your job. You've been busting your butt to finally get to the top. This person, they just pull off the street, goes ahead of you. You know, you're gonna, yeah, you're going you're, you're gonna to be unhappy. Right, absolutely. And I mean, they could have, had they not put the title on Pentagon from Redemption, you had Eli win the... Uh, the the case with the world title shot well he won it from moose i think um and he could have you could have just had him and aries with a small feud that actually you know they did something with it yeah i mean and even that that whole thing i just forgot about that but (laughs) that whole thing with moose like that was weird how they did that because i had thought moose had got hurt but it seemed like they weren't ready to give him what to put him in that main event slot yet that's why i thought when they removed the briefcase 
That is true. And um, I guess we are almost at an hour, so we'll talk about one more topic. Brian Cage. We knew once he came in, he had that, you know, he beat Lashley, kind of sent him off. And uh, he had a tremendous year as well. Definitely uh, a focal point for Impact. We knew that from the get-go. I mean, they made a big big deal about him coming to the company. Um, did you expect his push to be like this? Yeah, just given his size. And I think, you know, the one thing that they did a tremendous job of showcasing is that he's not just a power wrestler, but he can also move like I guess X Division style. I guess that's the, that's the yeah. term, but he can high fly. Um, you know, the one thing that I thought, and I guess I was just surprised with, was I really thought they were going to go all out Goldberg on him and just just have him just kind of just wreck through people, yeah. have this nice streak, and then finally, you know, lose. I mean, I didn't think he would lose when he did lose, but I thought <laughs> I thought once he, I thought his first loss would be losing the X Division championship. Yeah, yeah. I mean. I, I wish they did a little more character building with him. I mean, we've only heard him on the mic a handful of times, but uh, outside of that, yeah, he had a he had a really good year. Yeah, I mean, I, I just think too with him, what happened, and you know, I don't want to keep being a dead horse, but he got so hot. Just prime example, we were just talking with Sammy Callahan. When a wrestler gets so hot, you want to reward them with a championship. He got so hot that it didn't make no sense that Brian Cage was a champion. And obviously, they weren't going to slot him into a world title program yet. So they went with the X division. And I mean, I know there's been difference, difference of opinion with that. Like, you know, even I think we've talked about it and I've seen others talk about like he shouldn't have been X division champion. I agree. But they, they wanted to put a title on him outside of the world title. And unfortunately, since they don't have a mid card, that's what they had to go with. I I thought his reign was fine. I just really think where they missed the ball, they really could have helped, whether it be a Desmond Xavier or Sammy Callan or whomever, to give them that really big win of beating him for the X Division title. Right. And I I don't. No, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to say, and I think, you know, the way that they went about removing the title from him, they kind of robbed us of that moment and robbed the wrestler of that accomplishment. Yeah, somebody definitely could have used the rub from him to get over, and it wouldn't have hurt Cage. I mean, we all know that he was going to be in the world title scene sooner or later. Again, there's so many options they could have could have run with, but, I mean, they did what they did, and uh, we just got to move forward. Agree, agree. Yeah. Um, Killer Cross uh, made a, a good statement into Impact uh, when he came in. I really like the way they brought him in. Um, I think he was voted the person that's going to have the or make the most of his 2019. I forget exactly what they called it, but y- you know what I mean. Yeah, I think if the way things are that we see with him, he's probably going to be world champion sometime in 2019. Yeah, no doubt about it. There, There is a lot of people they can do things with in the world title scene. It, it's just going to be interesting how it plays out at homecoming with so many parties involved. Yeah, it's good. It's yeah. And I'm really looking forward. That's probably one of the matches that I'm looking forward to how it plays out because there's so many different scenarios they, they, that they could go. And, you know, with this big change now, you know, they're going to probably go pull out all the stops because they really want to kind of get that buzz going, let alone, you're the first, I think, if I'm not mistaken, they're the first uh, pay-per-view of the year, right? Yeah. And yeah. And, and, all, and all these uh, promotions, so oh, well, a way to make a uh, bank. Wrestle Kingdom, I think, is the third or the fourth. Oh, okay. Of January, yeah. Okay, okay, well, my, yeah. my, my mistake. But, yeah. well, you're one, one of the two or three, so, I mean, what not, what, what not better way to make a, you know, good statement? No, absolutely. Right in the beginning of the year. And, you know, there's a possibility we may get four pay-per-views rather than the three that we got this year, which was an increase from the two we got the previous year before that. Yeah, like 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 I said, you know, and that's kind of the reason why, you know, we see some of these people who, you know, have voiced their displeasure, all this. A lot of us, I think, collectively we want the company to thrive because when they're doing well, we, you know, we end up getting to see like this past, you know, 2018, three pay-per-views. Maybe we do get four. Like I said, maybe more live shows, maybe a second show. It's so many different things. So I just think sometimes, you know, people are so quick to say, well, you know, stop complaining. I mean, 
some criticism is valid criticism, you know. So, but I mean, I me. I know you're a sports fan, and we we want our teams to do good. What do we do? We criticize everything. Oh man, hey, you know, <laughs> it, you you gotta see and see. You know, me living in California, I like the East Coast teams. I'm Celtic Patriot fan, and look, I voice my displeasure, and people will tell me, oh, you know, you're you know, you're a terrible fan, and that's I'm like, listen, okay. You know, I have my standards. You have yours. OK, I look, I know they're the team and all this and that. They don't do it for me. They do it, whatever, like that. But I have standards for things that I love. And, you know, I'm the type, you know, if they're not meeting up to my standards, you're right. You don't have to tell me don't watch. I, I'll i do it myself. But I, I like to believe whether it's impact sports, et cetera, they don't want that to happen. They don't want it to be a situation where. Okay, you're unhappy, don't watch. Now at the end of the day, you can't please everyone, of course, but they want they want your eyes on the product. Because guess what? If you're watching it and you're enjoying it, you're gonna tell your friends and they're gonna tell their friends, and that's where the growth comes from. Right. So I just kind of just think sometimes when you know, sometimes you see it. Now, look, I'm not gonna excuse the trolls. There's always that oh, who's watching, there's some yeah, you gotta be able to separate that, but I just kind of think sometimes some of the criticism, some people take it so much as it, you're attacking the product. I mean, if it's, if the facts are there, the facts are there. I could see if people are going, you know, going out of the way to just create stuff. But sometimes the proof is in the pudding, so to speak. So a lot of us are just passionate, passionate fans. That's it. And that's it. And all at the end of the day, all we want to see is impact succeed. Yep. And uh, I think that's a good spot to end it. Ro, I appreciate you coming on the show. We've talked for over an hour now, and I'm sure we could probably go another one. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you having me. And if I just do a quick shout out to those, I'm sure you guys heard me. Um, you can catch me on the Impact Lounge. I do a show with my co-host Adam, Adam and Rose Show. But also we got two tremendous guys in Trent and Kyle who do an uh, amazing job doing the Impact review and as, as well as the mastermind of it all, BQ. So quick shout outs. And also people who've uh, stayed on listening this long. I know Keith normally doesn't have his uh, <laughs> videos this long, so I apologize. But uh, continue listening because, uh, Keith, you do a fantastic job. Um, not only covering uh, impact, you know, as far as your impact reviews, but with your viewership and explosion, people stop sleeping on explosion. That's kind of our free, uh, our de facto free second show. Um, hopefully the more eyes that watch that, maybe we can actually get it to be on actual television. So, um, but thanks for having me on Keith. No, thank you very much. So I will see you guys probably back for the go home show to homecoming. Thanks for listening, and until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.